Welcome back. We got another arcane. I think this is the third one in a row. They're really pumping these out and I'm kind of surprised they're doing it at a really fast rate. But we got another sword and it's a really, really good sword. And just like all the other times, I'm going to go over some builds, some recommendations on who you should give it to and whether or not your unit should either go with the arcane devourer or the arcane... I, I don't know how to pronounce it. If somebody could tell me in the comments, that would be really great. Thank you. <laughs> or if they should just keep their PRF or wait for a refine. Pretty simple stuff. So we might as well get right into it. Arcane Devourer is a really nice sword for a lot of your faster units since it basically has all the standard god sword stuff built into it. It has damage reduction, speed based no follow up, breath, stats, and slaying. It's not only good for your standard god sword stuff, whether that's vital astro or godlike reflexes builds, but it's also really flexible in usage because of the breath and slaying effect. And because of that, a lot of units can take advantage of this really well, despite it being more speed oriented. The original Arcane didn't do anything particularly well, which made it good for a lot of units in general. But at the same time, because it didn't specialize in anything, the ceiling as a result was extremely limited. But now with Arcane Devourer, a lot more units can end up being really competent as units, even the older ones with really bad refines. But going right into the infantry builds, we got a lot of general builds I think a lot of people were expecting to see when it came to just the speedy sword and all that. You have a Godlike Reflexes build and a Vital Astra build to start. Godlike Reflexes is relatively self-explanatory. You need to make the speed check and all the speed you could get is going to be really good. If you wanted to act more independently, you could always go with an Omni tanking build with Godlike Reflexes. I think the great thing with Arcane Devourer is that you don't necessarily have to charge it immediately for Godlike Reflexes, but if you did want to risk it, you could get first hit damage reduction from the weapon into godlike reflexes if there is a second hit or for mixed phase purposes you could set up with panic smoke 4 and close call 4 so you could always return back to allies to get even more support and by that point you should end up making speed checks way easier although if you want something that's a bit more melee specialist oriented you can always go with times pulse 4 finish and bulwark bulwark isn't entirely necessary for this set although i find it pretty decent in scenarios where the foe is able to reach the back line or any of your other allies you're trying to keep out of the crossfire. Although it's not entirely necessary, you could always go with something like Spiral 4, even though you would really just use it for damage reduction piercing. Although at that point, I'd probably use a higher CD special just for more damage output. Otherwise, you could still keep Dodge 4. That should be perfectly fine as well. And as I mentioned earlier, the weapon isn't entirely locked to one phase or the other. I mean that you could always go into player phase builds such as Gale Force. Now, I also think Gale Force builds are also a really good idea with this since it does have unconditional breath per attack, meaning that charging the special is going to be really really easy in general whether you want to give them wings of mercy or you want them to be the initiator they have access to plenty of skills that make it so you can do either role otherwise there's stuff like blazing wind builds although you don't necessarily need the sword just for this it is still good for looping purposes because no matter what you're always going to be able to get blazing wind back i think that's really good in its own right although it's something i wouldn't necessarily go your way out for just for the sword itself but if you did want some additional options you wanted to use some other funny builds you can infantry do have the benefit of getting the the charges really really fast so with arcane times pulse and maybe some additional support if needed unless you want to go into your first combat without it you should be able to get blazing wind really really easily and at that point you're just able to loop it i think one of the other really neat options it does go back to gale force and that you use it on the dancer you can get more turn economy which is really really good especially if you are running low on actions just for aether raids clears it is really expensive for what it's worth but i do think if you were to give it to a dancer who has at least a decent amount of attack to work with then you could see tangible results. But you also have to make sure that when they are initiating, they're initiating on something that isn't just a massive wall because near saves could easily make or break a lot of these situations. And last but not least, you could always give them some sort of sweep skill because it has innate no follow up built into it. So for units that are a lot more lopsided in nature, whether that's high defense, low res, or high res, low defense, you could either give them water sweep or wind sweep, negate foes' counter attacks that would otherwise target the lower of your two defensive stats. And then if needed, you could set up with speed smoke so you have some survivability afterward on top of the arcane damage reduction that you already get. I don't think it's the most necessary, but you do have the option at your disposal, which is why I do think it's worth mentioning anyway. And this is more or less about it when it comes to the infantry builds. There are other skills that you could still use on some of these builds, whether that's Mystic Boost 4, since it has an NCD effect, you could use LOL, Spiral 4, so on and so forth. It really will just depend on the unit at the end of the day, but it does have a lot of flexibility with infantry units because of the amount of skills they have access to. Next, we have the cavalry builds, and for the most part, they're really just going to be doing 
doing one thing and that's initiating combat. As it currently seems, they don't really have any defensive properties like the flyers do since they have guard bearing. So you may want to take advantage of their movement as much as possible since they're not really going to be doing a lot in the enemy phase as is. So if you wanted to run a Gale Force build, I was already talking about Gale Force like crazy. You just slap it on the cab. They already have three innate movement. Or if you wanted to do something with hidden run purposes, they did recently get alarm attack speed, which I think is really great for hidden run purposes. It's fixed canto one. So for cavalry that just generally go in all the time with hidden run in the B slot, you can still run away with two movement, which is really, really good. That being said, if you aren't necessarily going to extend your range all the time, you can still run stuff like near trace since you can still get upward of two or more movement depending on how far you move. And then with speed smoke four after combat, you can still get a bit more survivability, although it will generally depend on the cav because a lot of them aren't necessarily the most bulky as is. And if they're taking too much damage in the initial combat, then it may not mean much in the end. I do at least want to mention that if you are running arcane devour on any sort of fast cav, that you don't necessarily want to flow skill because they already have no follow up built into their weapon. At which point I would still take a regular near trace because it does inflict stats on the foe, making checks a lot easier and kill potential just a smidge better depending on which one you use. Next we have the armor builds and I do have to preface real quick that for most of the notable fighter skills, there's going to be overlap with the arcane no matter what. For example, hardy fighter has half no follow up built into it. The arcane has full no follow up. Vengeful fighter, breath, so on and so forth. For the most part, there is going to be overlap when it comes to the fighter's skill, so that is something you're just going to have to take into consideration if you do end up giving it to one of your armors. Still, the faster armors can use it relatively well. If you wanted to give it to Valentine Tana, who is just one of your recent additions to the game, you can give her near save with Stabby Fighter 4, which will be on the same banner, and focus more on one range threats. Although, if you did want to go into the Hardy Fighter set, I'm a bit torn between this one, mainly because the original Arcane does debuff attack for 6 points, and it does have guard in it. It, which is really really good but this is where the trade-off stuff generally comes into play because most notable player phase nukes tend to have tempo built into their weapon or any sort of half tempo so they're going to be able to get specials off no matter what but at the same time the other arcane does debuff attack for six points which can make tanking a bit easier and no matter what there are matchups you're just going to lose regardless of which one you take so if you did want something that was a bit more complimentary to their stat lines the new arcane is perfectly fine i would try to speed stack as much as possible so that way you are able to avoid doubles in a lot of scenarios, assuming it isn't Bridal Catrio, Winter Cordelia supported. And then outside of just your standard enemy phase armor stuff, you could still go back to Gale Force. I think it is a really good weapon for Gale Force purposes because of the innate breath and slang. So if you slap Wings of Mercy and Armor Boots on any of your fast armors, then you should be perfectly fine. Armor Boots isn't entirely necessary, although I do like it in scenarios where you do want to move more than one space. And lastly, there are the Flyer builds. And these are a bit more limited, but you have way more play styles comparatively to the cavalry because cavalry are more so just player phase units. Flyers now have guard bearing four, which is really good for enemy phase purposes. There are a lot of Gale Force builds. I know there's a lot of Gale Force builds, but it's it's really good. It's just a really nice thing you could give to a lot of these units. You could run Gale Force whether that's just for fury stacking or you just want something a bit more general. But if you want something that's a bit more unique that isn't just Gale Force. You could go guard bearing four with guidance four and with the arcane you end up with a really good amount of survivability it makes it so that you can act as a really decent frontliner for your units to then swoop in and take kills and that's about it when it comes to the builds because it is speed oriented it is a lot more limited in scope for just general usage but the ones that can take advantage of it are going to take advantage of it really really well and before we go right into the recommendations i do want to quickly talk about speed in just the current day of fey for the longest time i've generally been under the believe that speed has always just been a gradual increase meaning that even for units that were falling behind a bit it wasn't so drastic to the point where they just couldn't reliably speed stack especially in something like an aether aid setting and while i do think for something like aether aids it's still really really manageable speed power creep is absolutely the worst it's ever been i think a lot of people may go to the fact that yeah speed's generally been really high especially through gen 5 and gen 6 where units had like base 40 to 42 or 43 but i don't think that alone was enough. You did have older units that were maybe like base 28, 26, 25 speed that you could speed stack to some degree and get a good amount of success out of it. The problem nowadays is that units aren't coming with just 45, 46, 47 base speed. They're coming with that base speed and then they're getting weapons that then grant another spectrum 15 or more. You can even go as far back as something like Legendary Veronica who had attack speed plus 6 and then debuffed speed for minus 8. Or even go as far back as Winter Black Knight who debuffed 
Z-Bus for 10 and has Spectrum 5. Valentine's Takamu does the same thing. Alir, who just has 17 speed in their weapon. Lucia, while not nearly as fast, I think is one of the main contributors to the problem because the only way you're generally going to be able to take her down is if you outspeed. And to do that, you're going to need a lot of speed in your weapon since more often than not, they're going to be having the same bases as is. And in my opinion, it really just boils down to all of that. It's not necessarily the bases, but the weapons itself. And because of that, I do want to be a bit more realistic. I don't think most units with the arcane are going to be able to compete with a lot of the modern units nowadays. And it's really not something you should be worrying about anyway. I think if you're looking to take down a lot of the speedier god swords nowadays, you probably want to build a better dedicated counter than just trying to speed sack on one of your older sorties. And as a result, I decided my placements were going to be based upon a summoner supported brave self with speed boon, max flowers at plus one. I think this is something that you can more often prepare for and if you are able to deal with it then it should be relatively fine for the most part. So yeah you may see that there's just a lot of units split between both tiers. The exact cutoff is a bit hard to describe but the idea is that if you're not getting outsped by self to the point where you're getting doubled I think you could use the new arcane well enough. If not I would go and just use the older arcane sword because it's still a relatively decent sword for what it's worth. But in terms of speed checks outside of aether rays and all that stuff of course it's not going to be as manageable. So if you had to give the new arcane to any of these units, I would highly recommend any of the ones in the yellow category. Even Lumaire, who was recently added to the game, I find that the new arcane is just significantly better than her weapon. And in the last video, I did have an either or category as to they can either use one weapon or the other, but I feel that because the new one is really specialized, you don't necessarily want to use the older one if you can use the newer one relatively well. And as for the rest of the cast, I do want to talk about this real quick. I think most of these are relatively obvious. You don't want to give the new arcane to somebody like Alir, the Altinas, Byleths, etc, etc, because what they can already do on their own is already really, really good. Both Eliwoods would have to give up their PRF skills, which I don't think you really want to do whatsoever. And then even for units that you may be questioning why they're here, such as Sword, Reinhardt, and Laszlo, I find that they fall into this middle ground where their PRFs, in my opinion, are better than the first arcane, you know, the one with Lyph, it's a guaranteed follow-up, slang, all that. I find it's better than that. But for them in particular, I find that the new arcane sword is not a good fit for them, mainly because they don't have the proper stat line to take full advantage of it. And if you're pulling for this sword to give to a unit to help them out, I find that they don't necessarily need the help in that regard, at least until we get a better arcane that you may want to replace their weapons with. But yeah, I find dual phase brave is just better than a guaranteed follow up with slang, but for the new arcane, I find that they don't have the stats for it, which is why they're here. But then you also have stuff like Gregor, Flavia, Brave, Marth. I wouldn't necessarily put them on the same level as the other god swords, but I find that what they can do on their own is still relatively worthwhile, which is why I do have them here. Even Brave Marth, who I don't necessarily think is the strongest vantage unit, is still going to be getting a refine in maybe three, four months. I forget which exactly. And there's a very good chance that his refine is going to be significantly better than the arcanes anyway. So I don't find that giving it to him is a good idea whatsoever. But yeah, otherwise, a lot of the other units kind of fall into the same category. They either have better PRFs, they don't want the arcanes because it's not necessarily a good fit for them, or ditching their PRF skills isn't worth it in the end. And then as for the wait for refine group, it's pretty self-explanatory. These units should be getting a refine relatively soon, at least within the coming months months, but knowing IS, they could always jump around. It really will depend at the end of the day. And I did initially have young Marth here, but he falls into this weird category of sharing his weapon with a dancer, and the only dancers that get refined were Legendary Azur and Peony, so I don't really know what they're going to do with him. I think they may do something along the lines of giving him a new PRF like they did with Linus, but it's hard to say. For now, all we can do is wait. And that's about it for the Arcane Devourer video. If you do plan on giving this sword to somebody, let me know who you plan to give it to. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later.